So a therapy that can significantly reduce the air trapping will improve patients' outcome. I just wish that more doctors knew about it. What we're doing is we're giving them not only their breath, but we're giving their dignity back. For patients who have struggled with severe emphysema or COPD, there is a viable, safe, and proven treatment option, the Zephyr Valve. It's a breakthrough device that's providing hope and relief, literally helping the world to breathe. It may be a small valve, but the innovation surrounding it is one of the biggest advancements in care for people suffering from a debilitating disease. COPD is the third leading cause of death in the world and fourth leading cause of death in the United States. Millions struggle, often without even knowing what it is. There's at least 12 million people that are diagnosed with COPD in the United States. It's thought to be that that's about a 50% underestimate because of problems with timely and inappropriate diagnosis. And about 3 million of those are people that have predominant emphysema. Symptoms often don't appear until significant and irreversible lung damage has occurred. Patients need to be knowledgeable. They need to be given the information. They need to have opportunities for care. This is a group of patients that has historically struggled. They're often in rural areas and communities that are socioeconomically disadvantaged. While some reasons for the disease may vary, its effects are harsh for all patients. You can't take a deep breath. You're just like gasping. You're like real shallow breaths. I wasn't able to even take my groceries from the car to the house. But now, for the thousands of patients who have been treated with the Zephyr valve, they now have hope. The major problem that they face is the one that is the most poorly treated, and that's being short of breath or dyspnea. And if you look at the patient reports of what bothers them the most about their disease, 80 to 85% report that it's dyspnea. And the medications that they are given in their treatments are insufficient to treat and alleviate the dyspnea. Under the breakthrough device status, the Zephyr valve was the first FDA-approved minimally invasive option to help patients breathe easier once medication no longer controls the symptoms well. This is a very minimally invasive procedure in that we do not have to cut patients. These minimally invasive procedures didn't exist until this. Placed via bronchoscopy, the Zephyr valves block off a diseased portion of the lung to prevent air from getting trapped and reduce hyperinflation, which allows the healthier lung tissue to expand and take in more air. This results in patients being able to breathe easier, be less short of breath, and have an improvement in quality of life. So we try to eliminate the usage of that bad portion of the lung as much as possible by collapsing it, letting them use the good portion of the lung. I have four Zephyr valves placed in my lower left lobe. Barbara Doggett's lung function increased from 31 to almost 48 percent. Just like any other new technology, it's really a lot of educating physicians, it's educating patients, it's educating nurses. And it is innovation like the Zephyr valve that can reduce health disparities around the world. But we have a whole subsegment of the population that's been living like this for years. Now is the time to raise some awareness, to understand what these people have been living with. They deserve attention and they deserve treatment and they deserve resources and they deserve to be seen. Although the procedure is complete in under an hour, it's important that patients and referring physicians understand the evaluation and patient selection process. It's the assessment of patients, setting the correct expectations for the patient, what they expect to come out of this procedure. For some, it's about family's most precious moments. My goal was to be able to dance at my daughter's wedding when she gets married in November. <laughs> or to step back on the beach. So once I got down there and the waves came over my feet, I said, thank you, God. <laughs> it may be a very small thing to somebody else, but it meant the world to me. It doesn't matter as long as I'm out there on that big ship somewhere out there in the Caribbean. There is a huge number of patients, I believe, out there that have the potential to be candidates. But what they should know if someone doesn't respond, a patient, to their therapies for breathing, and they're at risk for COPD and emphysema because of risk factors, familial history, they smoke, they worked in a dirty, dusty job, they should think of referring them to a pulmonologist. For pulmonics, the biggest advancement in pulmonary care in decades is about hope for millions and increasing awareness of this breakthrough therapy. This is just the beginning. That's what's exciting to me.